All right, guys, I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I'm here with Yanti Lin. Today is the day we are talking about decimated Disney. More Marvel news as Disney is yanking Ironheart and Daredevil Born Again. Now, you guys might remember Daredevil more so than Ironheart, but we have the same cast kind of coming over from Netflix. A lot of people love the Netflix series. This character was kind of ran through on the She-Hulk series, and there were rumors on the set that they didn't want anything recognizable about Daredevil to the Netflix. I, I mean, they definitely wanted a different tone and whatnot as they were filming this. But uh, before we get into it, if you guys will look down below, please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. So, uh, Yanti, what is your take on this? Well, first of all, the fact that Disney is saying, hey, let's get rid of these two shows. And we kind of keep hopes up at this point in time. We're just going to say they are coming down the road eventually, maybe someday, who knows. So Ironheart and Daredevil though, are not the only films to get pushed down the road, as Disney would say. They have shows that are like, a, you know, the new cartoon they're doing, X-Men 97, that's pushed down to 2024. Agatha is also pushed down to 2024. Echo, which nobody's asking for, is pushed out 2024. There's basically a whole list of all these Marvel Universe titles all being pushed down to 2024. Because of the writer's strike, but a lot of these have already been produced or filmed or whatnot. Mm -hmm. In the case of Ironheart, we know that filming has been completed. But see, just because you filmed it, it doesn't mean that you have done the VFX, you've done post-production, it doesn't mean you've done marketing and all this stuff. Now, Arguably, the cheapest part of making a TV or movie show is really just the filming part. You know, you just need to pay the crew and actors, and that's it. The expensive part now, especially for a show like Ironheart, which we all know is going to be heavily CGI, the money's going to be all in the VFX and all that. Right. So at this point in time, when they say, okay, let's just, you know, put it aside for now. We don't do anything else with it for now. They actually are doing some of this concert cost savings. And keep in mind, if, if they go forward with these shows, like they still have to advertise them and heavily advertise them. And th that doesn't mean just on Disney Plus. That means they're going to have to go out there and, and buy TV commercials. They're going to have to buy YouTube commercials, all of that. And that is very, very big part of um, a, a big budget. It costs a lot. We've seen recently this happen at Warner Brothers where Zasloff, pulled back girl just for the sake it, movies done all done complete ready to release don't want to spend the money in advertising it so uh it can be uh, at least a third or half of the budget of a movie or tv show just advertising it so what why what's going on with disney themselves well it seems like it's not just the marvel stable that's being shuffled around by disney Recently, we learned that the Spider-Man Chronicles, which is already filmed, ready, you know, everything's ready. All they got to do is push a button and then release it on Disney+. Plus. They're like, okay, let's pull it back. We're going to try and shop it around to different networks. Now, arguably, you could say, well, that's because Disney doesn't own the IP to Spider-Man Chronicles. They can do whatever they want. They can just say, we're not interested, take it somewhere else. Yes, that's true. They can do that. But a lot of these shows, especially, is about convincing families that, hey, we have all these great shows coming down the pipeline for you and your family to watch. And obviously, you should keep your subscription. Now, imagine Disney says, promises, oh, Spider-Man Chronicles is coming. Psych! We pulled it away. It's not coming down anymore. It's like, um, mm, all right, sure. Then you start saying, well, we're going to delay all these other Marvel shows. And it's like, well, is it even worth my time to keep the Disney Plus subscription anymore? Maybe I should wait till they release in 2024 to renew. Right. And that's if the interest in the superhero boss is still there. Now, keep in mind, ideally... This character was introduced in She-Hulk and there's supposed to be Red Hot Buzz. No pun intended because he's in a yellow suit. But Red Hot Buzz on Daredevil. And this would just push into this show and there would be this type of synergy. Oftentimes has worked for the MCU and in the comic books themselves. Again, my feeling is that some of this is just woke. It's bad angles on the characters. They're getting really poor receptions like She-Hulk's. You know, viewership, I mean, we talked about it on this channel. They were getting like maybe a $300 royalty, some of the writers on the show. Like it wasn't producing any money because nobody was watching it. So to me, why would you put out like a spinoff technically of this Daredevil character, this version of Daredevil that premiered in the show that nobody's watching? It, it seems like it's DOA already, which is a shame because the, the actor, the character worked really well in Netflix. 
Like, you know, Netflix had a lot of boom with uh, the Daredevil series. So, one reason, though, that Disney may just be saying we're going to push all this stuff down the line, I hate to say it, but people always say, oh, you guys are always saying Disney is going broke. They're not broke. They're not broke. Well, apparently, Disney investors are suing Disney, Bob Iger, and Bob Chapek for what they consider fraudulent streaming costs. Specifically, the defendants are actually suing them, claiming that Disney is shifting the cost of the Disney Plus platform and onto legacy platforms, i.e. all the other network stuff that Disney owns. So they're saying, well, that means that they, basically what this does is it makes Disney Plus far more profitable than it actually is. I think the term is called cooking the books. And, and when a company owns so many things, you can kind of shift and push money and costs into your one shell company in different divisions. And it can make one part of Disney look more profitable because you don't get a clear scope of what that one division is, which would be Disney Plus right now, is, is performing when there's theme parks, when there's movies, when there's toys, when there's T-shirts, when there's like all this other stuff, right? It becomes very convoluted for the investors and uh, they, they only have the information that they, they, they present them. Now, if they're ever like fraudulent on that, here we are. And again, the term is called cooking the books. So what does this mean for Disney though? Basically, they're kind of caught. This is the third time where the investors came and claimed that Disney was not actually, Disney Plus was not as profitable as they claim it to be. So I think especially at this point in time, kind of fragile, all your writers are walking off, all your actors are walking off. And pretty soon, who knows who else is walking off? I think their VFX is unionizing and all that stuff. So Disney may be saying, maybe it's time to just kind of walk things back a little bit and say we're not investing that heavily in some of these shows right now. Just say it's coming down the pipeline, but who knows? We could use that standard strikes as an excuse to say, yeah, we're exiting that. Now, I'm going to leave the video with a rumor I heard coming out of San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, my source tells me that they heard, overheard a conversation People at Marvel, Disney, were actually looking and waiting and postponing um, using the strike to, because none of this stuff anybody's watching, this phase whatever, this woke phase, this MCU, nobody's watching it. So what if you just punt this stuff off, use the strike, use whatever, and then they come back with a reboot once everything's settled? I don't know. I'm still floating that theory out there. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, reboots are very common in superheroes. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Continuity gets too heavy. Uh, actors are aging in and out. Maybe they would just start over from scratch with a, a, a Tony Stark, a Captain America, Steve Rogers, things like that, and uh, just recast everybody and start again years from now. I don't know. Or, or whenever this strike is over. But anyways, if you guys will, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Also, over here, Nine Lives Comics, $66,316 for Shane Davis's Accent Level Up. This, If you like Tron, if you like Spider-Man, you're absolutely going to love Accent. I'll leave you guys with the trailer for this smash hit comic book, and I'll catch you guys again with another video. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.